Hey there, you know, I've been wondering, what's the most challenging hardware problem out there with no published solution? ChatGPT? Well, from what I've gathered, it's the fitment of hard drive trays into the Fractal Defined 7XL. Wait, that can't be that difficult, let's quickly check. Fractal Defined video, okay, here's a good one here from Fractal Design themselves, no instruction, okay. Uh, A2K makes really good videos, definitely give this guy a like and a sub, that's awesome. Okay, some instruction, you can probably figure it out, that one's not relevant. Craft Computing does great videos. Jeff, I really should subscribe to his channel as well. Okay, we got the hard drives there. They magically appear. Not enough detail. Linus, I've seen this video back to front several times. Uh, pretty helpful, but still no instruction on how to install those hard drives. Wait, so it's real? Let's try one more. This can't be true. Okay, this one from Joshua Sutherland here. And okay, nice. He's got the 5.25 inch bay. And okay, no instruction. This is a problem. So where on earth would we find information on that it sounds like a real mystery well my friend as far as i know there's only one channel in the world that has covered it and to the best of my knowledge that's races e studios races e studios huh interesting well it looks like i know where to turn for some hard to find hardware solutions then absolutely races e studios seems to be the go-to place for those elusive hardware mysteries who knows maybe they have the secret to fitting those hard drive trays perfectly into the fractal defined 7xl good luck with that Cheers! Have a good one! Race Z Studios presents the solution to the problem that should not even exist. Yeah, definitely read that twice. That should not be a problem. But anyway, let's see if we can figure out how to take our drives, successfully install them into this machine. We'll even include a drive tally towards the end of the video. Stay uh, tuned for that one. But for now, no fluff. Here it is. The front face is removed on this case. The Fractal Defined 7XL. And the first step we need to take is to fit some screws to mount a supporting brace. Which brace? Well, it's this one here. This is the hard drive mounting brace, which you must install if you plan on running a tremendous amount of hard drive. So pretty sturdy, very easy to slot in, but not very easy based on instruction. I feel like there's almost no instruction on how to do this. It took a while to figure this out. But anyway, you slot it in, follow my guide. We've got several screws to mount it. It does slot into the case. Uh, fairly straightforward once you see the orientation here as well but overall that does fit relatively well it secures a little bit up top I think there may be a couple of screws in the top face and quite a few screws in that front face but anyway that's the easy part here's the lower bay on the Fractal Defined 7 XL we do have four storage bays right down the bottom and there's our power supply bay as well as you can tell we can fit quite a few hard drives already but this is the magic we have to purchase these hard drive trays they are an additional expense a very limited number of supplied in your factory case but if we scan through here that will eventually give you the option to run a tremendous amount of hard drives but take note there is an added expense so how do we install these well, it's actually relatively simple you'll see a hook on one end there's a pin on the other a screw right at the back and a little thumb screw up front. The thumb screw is quite easy to do by hand. You could use a little tool as well. That's not terribly difficult. Just scope out these uh, connections here. So very, very straightforward. Once we connect our hard drive onto one of these trays, take note, this is the hard drive tray kit. Type B, there are two of these trays in one of these kits. Once we remove our hard drive and fit, all we want to do is hook it off on the far left. We then want to secure the pin on the far right. Then we secure our thumb screw, straightforward enough. And then right at the back, we got our little mounting screw. Uh, another key point, the Nexus Plus 2. Definitely check out the pinout. We have on the left, 3-pin power. On the right, 4-pin power. We also have a SATA power connector and a CPU 4-pin power connector, which is pretty handy to get this thing up and running. Now while we're here, this is our SSD mounting bracket. Very straightforward, one thumb screw, two hooks. We can install one SSD on each of those. Fairly straightforward fitment and very easy removal. Quite a handy location there as well at the back of the case. Drive tally, let's go for it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You'll have to check my counting. 15, 16, 17, 18. That's 18 drives without even breaking a sweat on this machine. Wow, that's incredible. And you probably could fit more. I feel like there's a lot of extra space. Not, nothing standing out. I do remember Linus putting one over the rear fans. That was quite creative. For now, let's get into this front panel, which is obscuring our mounting screws. Now, we can very clearly see the little hard drive hook, as well as the hard drive pin, and the little mounting screw. Now, these are the 
basic mounting mechanism. The bracket itself becomes relatively sturdy once we fit these brackets. Very important to keep an eye out for this. So one more time, that process, just so we have clarity on how to actually install these into our system. And that's a lot of hard drives. Very impressed with the overall design of this case. But let's check it out. So there's our little hook. You'll see it sticks into the case quite neatly. There's a little pin. I'm going to find one of those screws in the supplied hardware box. But there you can see the little thumb screw. And lastly, there's also the little screw that we have to thread in. That's a fairly straightforward process, but it is somewhat mysterious. No one's ever published that, which I do find fascinating in its own right. Now onto the system. What have I used this case for? Well, I've actually done an HPZ 440 case swap. Right there, we've got the Intel Xeon E52697A V4 CPU, part of the X99 architecture. We do have 80 terabytes of hard drive storage. We also have an Intel X540 T2 10 gigabit network interface card. And I have managed since publishing my DIY guide to bump up my network speeds. That's right, we're getting very near that 10 gigabit, which is awesome to see. Let's make it really easy when you're trying to transfer a whole heap of files from one machine to another. That'll be from the HP ZAG4 to the HP Z440 when I'm uh, finished editing videos. But anyhow, there it is. We have really decent speeds. And the Z440 is living on in a rather powerful case. Now, a couple of extra mods that have needed to be done, and maybe some future videos on this machine. Don't forget, if you are a fan of the channel, definitely hit that like and uh, subscribe. And talking about fans, what is this fan? Well, this fan here pulls out air that the uh, machines are making and pushes it out the window, mounted into the window stool. A little bit of uh, desperation there, trying to cool the place down. But anyway, there it is. Now one final detail for the drive tally. There are the old master 5.25 inch bay adapters getting us a total of 29 hard drives. Or at least there's 29 slots. I can't guarantee that I've actually filled all of those slots up just yet. But that's still pretty impressive nonetheless. And overall I think now's the time to pull the handbrake on this operation because wow that's a lot of hard drives. Now it's okay, there's always room for more, but uh, yeah, we probably should pull the handbrake on this, this is crazy. But that's my sim racing handbrake, so we'll leave that for now. Uh, definitely give me a thumbs up if you want to see more of those videos, that would be fun. But here it is, six PCI slots occupied to their full capacity on this machine. We've got a riser adapter connecting our GPU. We've also got the HPZ TurboDrive Quad Pro with four one terabyte NVMEs for a little bit of caching on that TrueNAS server. We have this fan, which was actually critical, don't judge the mounting too harshly, in order to cool down the 10 gigabit network interface card. It was actually overheating and therefore not giving me full speeds. That's kind of annoying. USB-C card, we have our H240 HBA host bus adapter, allowing those network drives to attach. And man, we really should pull the handbrake on this operation. This thing is off the charts. It's okay, you gotta get the max out of your hardware, but there's a little HBA there as well, serving really well connecting all of these hard drives or at least most of these hard drives also use some of the ports on the motherboard itself uh, talking about cpu well well hey, wow, that's a little bit uh, hefty there but we can also upgrade this if we were that way inclined we can even upgrade the memory right now i've only got 64 gig of ddr4 2400 megahertz ecc registered memory but we do have extra slots so we can totally expand this out further as storage capacity increases we should aim for about one gigabyte of ram per terabyte of storage so we probably should be up on like 80 but anyway there is room for improvement now give this project a wave and a thumbs up for now i'm pretty impressed with how the system's handling so what can we look forward to and what's going to happen with the fractal defined 7 xl well i did promise that it was going to fit the hp elite desk 800 g3 and there it is. I delivered on that promise. Am I going to do this case swap? I don't think it's worth doing, but it might be worth doing. We'll call it uh, FMS, Frankenstein Mini Server. So if you were that way inclined, you could totally mount this in this case. It would require a little bit of a custom bracket. There are no mounting locations, according to my checking. That would actually bolt up. Why would you want to do it? And you know I'm tempted because I also found an adapter that can allow a USB 3.1 and a USB-C internal header to be adapted to the M.2 slot. So I guess I'm calling this viable, but you'll have to stay tuned and see that in the future. See you in the next video.